Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this pension board meeting on Monday, the 22nd of July. Um, please be advised this meeting will be recorded and posted on the Council's YouTube channel. And could I remind uh, members and speakers to ensure your microphone is switched on before addressing the board and remember to switch it off when you have finished speaking. Uh, I'd also like to notify members at this stage that there is a vacancy on the pension board as Councillor, Sa Councillor Sandra Bauer is no longer a member of the board. So we are, I understand, I think we're working on resolving that uh, at present to get that done. So with that said, do we have any apologies for absence? I suspect not since the uh, employee representatives are both here. Uh, any urgent business? I see none. Could you just turn on your microphone, please? Thank you. It, it was just it was just asking whether at any time in the meeting the the crowd strike outage would be mentioned and whether it had any impact on Greenwich our partners or therefore the pension if we could definitely take that later because there's a formula I just have to go through on this thank you cheers and we'll do that so lovely any declarations of interest for items on the agenda present no uh, could members confirm that the minutes of the meeting held on the 18th of March 2024 are accurate Yep, thank you. I shall sign those. Perfect. And yes, I can invite members of the um, pension panel if they wish to leave now they can or they can stick around for pension board. So. <laughs> so. Uh, Councillor Gardner, are you sticking around for board or you're welcome to leave at any point? Yep, <laughs> thank you. So. Okay, uh, item number six, the draft pension fund annual report 2023-24. Uh, we'll turn to Julian to provide a review and commentary of the annual report. Please, Julian. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, the board is asked to review and provide commentary for the pension fund annual report 23-24, which includes the draft pension fund accounts. The next stage in this process for us to hand the accounts over to the auditors, and once the audit testing has completed, we should have the audit finance report back to this, to this board. Um, there are two main statements I'd like to take the board through. Um, the first one is on page 265. Two six five. There should be a table. Yeah. So this is effectively a profit and loss accounts. This presents item of income and expenditure for the fund relating to investment transaction and those that relate to the fund, as per the training Kenny went through. Um, the fund value increased by one hundred and six million over the course of this year, compared to a decrease of fifty. 1 million for 22-23 financial year. In terms of dealing with members, both years represent a net withdrawal, so more money is going out than coming in. So for 22-23, we saw 7 million, and then for 23-24, it's 15 million. Um, this is a result of the fund maturing, so it's normal to go through this process. However, the fund is monitoring this and is aligning our position um, in order to make sure cash is available to pay um, benefit when needed. Um, I'll just go over the second um, main statement, which is the net asset. It's just on the next page, 266. This is effectively the balance sheet, and it presents the assets of the fund represented by investment portfolio. Adjusting for working capital, um, the distribution between these asset class is shown on the face of the account, and Kenny will go through this in terms of the performance report a bit more in details. However, the net asset of the fund has increased from 1.584 billion to 1.691 billion. The performance of individual funds, it was mixed, although overall performance was positive. I'm happy to take any questions on this, Chair. Uh, any questions, gentlemen? Yeah. Just want to ask a general question. I mean, I, I know that we're required to write this report, you know, the, under regulations. But 
wondering who it's aimed for. I mean, who, who, who actually reads it? Thank you. Great question. I think it's, it's, it's aimed. So there's two parts of this. You have the statements of accounts, which is a more detailed part of just taking you through. So that's obviously a regulatory. The auditors will review that. Then there's another part of this, which is the annual report. So that's forwarded. That one is geared more towards the membership and other stakeholders. So it meant to be with a bit more graphics, with a bit more explanatory notes. However, over time, it's become more complex as more requirement is needed. And this year, further requirement is needed in terms of breaking down UK assets and about pooling. So as we go through this, it was intentionally meant to be a document that's easily readable by the membership. But over time, because of uh, requirements and guidance, it suddenly increase in terms of the pages, which you can see. Simon, do you want to come in? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'll stick on. Uh, the only point I'd ask is, is have I missed it? Is, is there a summary at one point? I, I realise with the complexity of it, it's very, <laughs> might be very hard to have a summary, but I was just wondering if there was a kind of a really kind of key bit, because I, I can imagine, I mean, having tried to read through it, well, obviously not in great, you know, not all of it, but um, it's quite complex and very dense, and therefore I was just wondering if there's some, like, like an executive summary that you would get on a lot of reports. So maybe if I point you to page 54, and maybe after you review it, maybe as part of the recommendation of the board, you could make that officers look at maybe us creating a, a bit more details executive summary. You know, we, we can look at it and see how we can bring information together. But if you want to have a look at page 54 first, and just to see if something like that is what you're thinking, or maybe a bit more detail. 54 shows a pie chart of the breakdown. Is that what you're indicating? Yes. Okay. So I, I think what that doesn't cover is that, you know, we are now in a position where uh, disbursements outweigh contributions, which you covered on. So I think that would be... So I think, Alistair, where we could go with this is perhaps an ask or a recommendation for a more accessible report, I think, easier to understand for fund members who want to review this without having to go through this in great detail, I think, perhaps. Is that something you want to elaborate on? Yes, that's the general, the general part. I mean, I don't want to just pile more work on what I know is a very hard section, but it's just trying to think, who is it meant to be read by? Therefore, when they look at it, is there somewhere they can go that will actually provide key points so they can understand it? Yes. No, 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 th thank you for that feedback. And so what we'll try to do, we'll try to see if we can make it for this one before we hand it over to the auditors. If not, next year when we produce this thing, we'll, we'll come very early to the board with suggestion in terms of a two-pager with a summary that will be included in this. Yeah, so I, I think, Matthew, if we could note just as a recommendation that, um, that, that a more accessible report is produced, I think the pie chart's a good start, but I think about the overall position. And following up on that, um, is what, what is the fund's options if this continues in terms of you know, payouts outweighing um, contributions, because I think that, that would be interesting in the layman's terms, what, what we are able to do. And thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, f first thing to say is that this isn't uncommon. Um, LGPS funds are moving t to a position where they, their cash flow negative. The money coming in doesn't, isn't always sufficient to cover the benefits going out. So that's a situation where we need to start drawing income from the fund's assets. And um, Julian and, and Ryan and, and, and the team uh, commissioned a paper from us uh, a little while ago where we looked across the, the fund's assets to determine uh, which which of those assets could provide income um, and that's that's been set up and it's up and running and so the income that we get from those 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 assets is designed to cover cover that annual shortfall but yeah just, just to reassure you it's not uncommon it's all part of the plan type of thing and uh, yeah we, we just need to, to work with with Julian and his team to make sure that that income is readily accessible when it's needed. Thank you. Uh, Simon. Thank you. I mean, it's really just a sort of point of information, um, as much as for Alistair, as much as anything. Uh, just in my experience, um, in terms of who is interested in the accounts, um, very often it's been people who are interested in climate change and are we doing all the best things there. But also when particular things crop up in the news, uh, so for instance, I had an inquiry, I 
branch committee to sort of in general about um, do we invest in Israel or firms that operate in the occupied territories. So, you know, that's just tends to be the sort of things that people want to know about. Um, but you can't, in a report, you can't assess every possible possibility coming up, you know, uh, and there's only so much information you can include, and if you include too much, nobody, nobody's going to get through it. Anyway, thanks. Thank you for that, Simon. Yeah, that's a, a very valid point and a good insight. Thank you for the kind of thing people are asking for. And I, I do wonder, do the pensions team receive queries like that day to day? Obviously, there's this forum, but do you, do you often get certainly SG questions, that sort of thing, related to global events? Yep, thank you, Chair. Yes, we do. Um, we, we get it through different means. So we get FOIs being asked for us, which um, the board wouldn't see. We will answer that through the um, Section 151 officer. But also at full council, you probably see that on Wednesday, we, we get questions which we draft on behalf of the chairs. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any other questions or comments on item six from members? No? Are members happy to note the report? Yeah. Yeah, excellent. That moves us on to item number seven, the annual report of the local pension board 2023-24. Uh, I'll hand over to Julian to uh, present that. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is just an annual report. Re which really summarised the working of the board for 23-24. Um, I'd just like to highlight one thing really. Um, just noteworthy to say that um, in 23-24, we introduced a quarterly presentation to the board from fund investment managers, which were solely focused on ESG. Um, this process has proven, as, has provided a platform through which the board members can ask questions of the fund managers in relation to their stewardship and engagement. We hope to continue this and to develop it more. Thank you. And I would just like to add on that, the, uh, in regards to my attendance, my apologies again for the previous year. I had a, a number of medical issues which are now hopefully resolved, so I hope to be with you uh, a lot more <laughs> in the coming year as we go forward. Uh, are members happy to note item seven, the annual report, pension board? Any questions or comments on that? Oh, Simon, yeah. Well, I, I need to, to thank uh, Julian for this for compiling this report and the, the huge amount of work he and his team put into the other report. Definitely note that please. So thanks. Thank you, Matthew. So okay, are members happy to note the report? Yeah. Yeah, excellent. Let's move us on to item number eight. Uh, to note the minutes of the pension investment and administration panel meetings held on Monday the eighteenth of March. So that was earlier this year. Um, I was actually in attendance at that one. Uh, are members happy to note those? Did you want to present anything on that, Julian? No, okay. Are members happy to note that, those minutes? Yeah, yeah noted, excellent. Okay, which moves us on to item nine. Item of business nine contains information which is exempt from the provisions of the Local Government Act 1972, Schedule 12A, because it discloses information relating to the financial business affairs of any particular person, including the authority holding that information. Therefore, the rest of this meeting will be in closed session and the public, including the press, are requested to leave. <laughs>